Hello, my name is Vail Larkin. I'm a poet living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I am a disabled wheelchair user, among other things. This next poem is called Altheity, which is a uh, old English word that means stranger or foreigner. And uh, it's one of my favorite words ever and has been since I found it in the Oxford Complete when I was in college. When she arrived, big eyed and shimmering like the wings of insects, they feared her. She was essentially alive, every movement inspiring more motion, each beat of something very like a heart, driving vitality before it, spreading it through her flesh and skin and beyond. She glowed like a star or a flame or like radium. They wondered what danger she might be, sharp teeth concealed behind a luminous smile. She did not ever mean to leave them. When she stayed, they did not know where to put her. Her strangeness was silvered by the glint of her skin, so beautiful, so uncanny, like the moonlight at noon or a hint of cinnamon on the breeze over a graveyard. She was unexpected. All their little boxes, all the squares they stuffed themselves into, shredded at her touch. She defied containment. She burned straight through the seams, remaking and unmaking them. She could not grasp the will to remain limited. When she changed, they rose up and cried their outrage at this most terrible of betrayals. To be a solid thing, well-known and nearly comforting, and then to shift in a moment into a form unknown and uncontrollable, too awful to contemplate. She tried to show them, singing of silver to gold and star glow to sun, all light, light, always, showing them the faces of herselves and all their manifestations. They cried out and cursed, and some ran far away for fear of her vagaries. She thought that she would show them something new. When she vanished, most did not miss her did not speak or think or dare to dream about their incandescent guest. Some truths are buried deep by those hoping to stop their spread, but truths are seeds and roots will out, and sometimes now a woman would sleep a milkmaid and wake a purveyor of alchemical equipment. Sometimes a man would sleep a husband and wake a wife, and sometimes children grew up nothing like their parents. She had sown herself and chaos in their fields. When she came to them like a gift or like a plague of possibilities, they had no way of knowing what she meant. Carving away their differences, their singularities, they had almost lost the sense to understand her. Now someone sees themselves in a mirror as if for the first time. Now someone trembles with excitement at the thought of spring. Now children do what they have always done, and no one stops them or fails to play along. She is reborn again and again.